told my mom that her coming out is what ruined things between us. I tried posting this elsewhere, but I think it got caught in a spam filter and the mods haven't responded. I don't know if this is the right place to go either, since I'm 16F. Like, I mostly live with my dad, but I spend a weekend every month with mom. They divorced three years ago. Mom moved in with my cousin, and it was cool because I went there all the time. Like a year and a half ago, mom made me go there, introduced me to this girl, and came out to me and said they were dating. She and her fiancé are engaged now. She also said they were moving to Victoria in a week. So yeah, after a week, she was gone. From where I am to her, it's a drive, a ferry ride, and then another drive. It takes a while to see her, that's why. I can only go once a month. Since she left, everything's so sucky between us. Now it's like a good morning message and FT good night for five minutes. And everything else that changed with her just dipping like that sucks too. I don't even like visiting her cause it's like I don't belong with her and her fiancé, but I went cause I thought that she wanted to see me, and I miss her a lot every day. This weekend I was in Victoria, and she was FT my cousin while I studied, and they got to wedding talk. She said stuff like how her life is 100x better since she left, how she's finally got real happiness in her fiancé, her fiancé is her world now, and can't wait to fully move on from her old life. It just made me so freaking angry like her life is so much better with me barely in it, and move on from that old life? I'm from that old life. I guess she noticed I was pissed cause at night she tried to talk to me. I said I didn't want to talk, but she's like she deserves to know when something's wrong with her girl since I always seem so depressed whenever I come over, and that just made me snap, and I lost it and started shouting at her. I was like I fucking hate the way she came out cause my life got a lot worse, and it ruined things between us, and it sucks that it's like she wants me gone cause she's happier without me. That started a pretty bad argument, cause she was like, I'm blowing it out of proportion, I just don't understand. And then mom just left the room, but I heard her crying when I walked by her room to go to the washroom at night. In the morning, her fiancé drove me to the ferry right after breakfast instead of after dinner. Since then, it was just text cause I didn't want to talk to her. My dad and his GF have noticed my attitude, so yesterday, I told them what happened and he flipped telling me I couldn't say that shit to my mom and his GF said I was an asshole for saying it. Before I went to sleep, I FDD mom to talk again, and she said my happiness is hers, and if she's why I'm depressed, I shouldn't see her till I'm ready. Now I don't know like if I was wrong to say that shit to mom, or what I should do even my fucking counselor is still in Barbados. My dad's at work and his GF's like, she's staying out of it, and my cousin did too. Again sorry if this is the wrong subreddit. If there's a better one for me to post, since the other one I tried doesn't seem to be it either please let me know. So, a lot of shit has happened since my last post, and I just feel more shit than before. I didn't plan on posting here again, but you all were so nice I thought it couldn't hurt to hear what you have to say. But I called my uncle, he wanted to see me cause I was scared my dad told him, and then he's ashamed of me too cause he's gay, and he's my fave uncle ever. So he picked me up after school, and I went to his apartment, and he just gave me a big hug cause he knew something was up. So I told him what I said, and why I said it, and that I was scared he'd be mad at me too if my dad was the one who told him. He just told me he isn't mad and he understands, and we played basketball at the court nearby until it was time for him to drop me off. That was like the last time I've even felt actually happy cause the entire rest of this month has been such absolute shit. Like I phoned my mom to say sorry the day after and talk about how I feel but all she did was get mad at me for telling my uncle and said I'm not allowed to share stuff about her home without her permission. I said was sorry about both things but she said it didn't matter now and just hung up. Then her fiancé texted and just said to give my mom a few days to calm down that just made me mad cause why should I she's my mom? I should be able to phone her whenever and I tried but she just declined my call and then I think turned off her phone. I dunno I haven't slept properly at all since then cause I think I ruined things with my mom for good like all she's been doing is texting me and we've barely actually talked. Like I keep thinking about it and my thoughts and dreams just get all messed up and it's like I get this soft lump in my stomach that keeps coming and going the more I think about it. It feels like I was right about me being part of her old life and I wish I'd never said what I did to her. Then it turns out I was supposed to get a tetanus shot when I was 11 but I didn't for some reason we're not anavaxxers so I had to get it now cause dad said VCHA was on his ass and I ended up having a terrible allergic reaction to it. Like I got sent to the hospital for a week cause of it, like apparently super rare reaction hooray for me, and that fucked up my exams too, and my mom didn't even come see me cause she was going to a cabin with her fiancé the day after. She talked to my dad on the phone, and learned how bad it was but just texted me she knew I'd be better, and that if I was still there when she came back she'd come right away like it made me want to stay in the hospital for longer. She didn't fucking come, everyone came, but her like my cousin came, every day, and my dad's GF even slept by me a few days and my nieces, and even my boyfriend's and best friend's moms came, but mine didn't. And when I got out all I got was a text saying, so happy you're out of the hospital baby with a selfie from her and her partner showing off the cabin included with it. Like I couldn't stop looking at that stupid photo I like obsessed over it for days and kept getting that stupid feeling in my stomach and so I smashed my phone and my dad's GF heard and he got an emergency meeting with my counselor. She's a psychologist but I've always called her that setup. 
and I told her everything but more details, Obvi, and at the end of it, she said I'm very likely depressed and might need treatment. I dunno I got scared and asked her to tell my dad, and she did, and told us to get our family doctor give a referral to a psychiatrist to get proper diagnosis for treatment, or to just get it from the family doctor. My dad got scared, and made us get that referral the next day. My dad made the appointment, and asked my mom to come, but she said she won't be able to, and just texted me to stay strong, and remember I'm the most important thing in the world to her. I don't know what to do, I don't want meds, or anything, I just want my mom to love me like she used to again. If you guys have any advice on what to do I need to hear it cause it's like my mom isn't even listening to me anymore and the appointment is on Friday and I'm feeling scared. So, I would have made an update earlier, but I just didn't have time. I'm in the hospital right now recovering from my ankle surgery and all I have is time until I can go home on Friday, so I thought I might as well update. The day after I wrote my post I had my niece's mom, my cousin-in-law, but she introduces me as her little sister, so SIL drive me to my uncle and he just gave me the biggest hug ever and I know I just ended up crying a little and they ended up calming me down. I told my uncle about the appointment with the psychiatrist and that I was scared even though everybody you guys was saying it would be okay and that I'd just been so unhappy and that I just miss my mom so much. He agreed to go with me and my dad to the psychiatrist cause my mom wouldn't be coming. I don't know I just didn't sleep at all that night and just felt so scared in the morning and kept thinking about mom and didn't want to go to school either but I did go just felt so weird like that feeling in my stomach was just there and not going away. Only hanging out with my boyfriend felt right, and before lunchtime I just fell asleep in class and got sent to the office they phoned my dad, and he signed me out and dropped me off at my uncle's house. He was already taking care of my niece, so I felt bad but I went to sleep at the same time as her, and he took a really cute photo of us sleeping next to each other. He woke me up when my dad came back, and we just went to the psychiatrist together. Long story short, at the end of the appointment the psychiatrist prescribed me a really low dose of antidepressants cause I'm still scared. I've been taking them and they have made me feel a bit better, but I have another appointment next week cause my counselor says I might need a higher dose. When I vented to my counselor, she said she'd be willing to host an extra joint session between me and my mom on Zoom if she agreed and that it might help if I get my feelings across with a third party. I didn't want to do it, but some of you recommended it and my counselor said it could be a good first step. So I called my mom and it was a short conversation again, but she agreed to the counseling session and all I had to do was send her the Zoom link, so we set one up for later. So I had the Zoom session in our computer room, so I'd be all alone there, and at first my mom seemed so excited because she was like we can work through our issues and put them behind us. I don't want to talk about all of it, I mean I couldn't anyway, I can't remember most of it, but it didn't go good at all like when my counselor brought up me not being with her that much my mom said when I came to Uvic I'd obviously stay with her, and I just said after everything I didn't even want to go Uvic anymore, and would rather just go to UBC because everybody here actually wants me. My mom said that was ridiculous since outside of Waterloo UVic was the best option for software engineering in Canada, and UBC only has electrical computer engineering, so I'd have to go to her if I still wanted to do that. I remember my mom said like a few times like she'd spent over a decade doing nothing but be a mom, and now that she finally understood herself, she just wanted time to explore that, and I should appreciate that. Then at the end of it, I told my mom that I hated that she didn't come and see me in the hospital, and that she didn't even phone me like I told her I was scared I'd die, and she just said it wasn't that serious because it was a vaccine, and those protect us, and to not act like it was psoriasis. I dunno that made me mad, and I just muted my mic because I didn't want them to hear me crying, but I kinda had a breakdown and just ran out to my dad and his fiancé because I was crying. They said they ended the session, but I don't know what they said to my mom or the counselor. Apparently, I fell asleep crying on the couch while hugging my dad, but I don't remember any of it, but my dad said I was crying really loudly. I think they carried me to their bed, cause when I woke up in the morning I was there, and my dad was on a mattress by the door, and she was on one by the washroom door. They said it was to block me cause they were scared I'd try something. My dad took my new phone and laptop for me for a bit, and said it might be healthy for me to stay off them for a bit. I have them back now. I haven't talked to my mom at all since then, I mean not even good morning good night texts. She hasn't contacted me at all about my broken ankle even though I had surgery yesterday, and I feel like she doesn't even care that I got hurt. Like I know dad told her that I'm going to surgery, but she hasn't called. I have my phone and laptop back now, but my dad made me delete IG and snap cause he's worried seeing her on there might trigger me. A lot of you said I should stop talking to HR, but I feel bad about it like when I think about it makes me feel worse like it's over now and I don't have her anymore. I just want her back. The only time I learn what's up with her is if I go to my cousin, who my mom stayed with after the divorce, and ask, and apparently she's still happy, and is occupied with all her wedding planning. Like another thing that sucks is that I used to love watching Scream with my cousin, but now I can't even watch it cause I feel bad for Billy cause his mom left him too, and I feel bad for feeling like that cause he's the villain. So, I couldn't even get through our rewatch, and we couldn't even watch the new one. I told my counselor that I still feel really bad and sad, and nothing's changed, and she said I need to bring it up in my next appointment with the psychiatrist, so he can up my dose. I don't know I feel confused, and I don't like not seeing or talking to my mom at all. I feel like I've done the wrong thing.
I've tried to do things we used to with my dad's fiance and my boyfriend's mom, but it's not the same, and I just miss her more even though she probably doesn't miss me at all. I wish I could see her, but I don't want to keep ruining things for myself, cause what if she doesn't want me anymore? I'd rant to my counselor about it, but I'm stuck in the hospital bed till Friday, so I guess that's why I'm back here looking for advice on what to do when I'm out of here. Hey guys, I'm posting again cause I'm confused as to what's going on, and I thought maybe I'd get some opinions here before I bring it up with my therapist. Pretty much, I don't know if my mom hates me still, or if now she wants to be my mom again. Cause everything that she's done lately has made it so confusing. So my foot is still bad. The doctor said it's healing, but I'm mostly confined to crutches or to a wheelchair, and so I'm not really able to go to a lot of places. I mean, I can go anywhere, but I don't go cause it just takes too long to get around. I'm guessing that my cousin told my mom cause apparently she came to New Westminster and did her wedding dress shopping there with my cousin and her fiancé, and she didn't even tell me. I know we hadn't talked since the therapy session, but she promised me that I would get to do that with her, and she didn't even tell me. I found out cause when I visited my cousin, she showed me the dresses she was going to wear at the wedding and at the reception, and the ones my mom and her got for me to wear at those. I was confused cause I was sad she didn't take me, but happy cause that meant she still wanted me there. Anyway, her wedding was on Canada Day, and I went with my cousin to Victoria a week earlier. My dad did say I didn't need to go, but I didn't want to miss it. We stayed at an Airbnb that my mom got for some of our relatives cause her place was too small. She didn't come to visit me there, but my cousin went to meet her, and I didn't go cause my foot was hurting really bad. When she came back, she said my mom was really disappointed I didn't come as well. The day after I was going to go shopping downtown with my cousin, but then my mom came. Like when she saw me, she didn't give me a hug like she usually gives. She just kind of held my shoulders and gave an awkward kiss on the cheek and said she's glad that I decided to come. Then she kind of turned me over to my aunt, my mom's cousin, to go shopping with instead cause she and my cousin would be busy that week with all the wedding stuff and making sure it all went perfectly so we couldn't go downtown. I love my aunt so it wasn't bad going to downtown with her. She didn't even mind pushing me in the wheelchair, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Two days before the wedding, they had this really big meet the family's dinner where my mom and her wife were introducing people to their relatives because my foot got swollen and the boot was hurting it, I had to go in the wheelchair. So my mom didn't even introduce me to people, and one of the few times I was able to talk to her, this guy related to her wife interrupted us, asked who I was, and she just said don't worry about her, and then had an aunt of mine will me away. That made me really upset, but I did feel a bit better cause her fiancé's parents brought gifts for me. Not my kind of stuff, I think they thought I was younger than I am. The wedding itself was cool. My foot wasn't badly swollen, then so I was able to use my crutches. My mom acted so differently then and made me take a bunch of pictures with her and with her fiancé, and she seemed so happy and told me that it was the best day of her life only cause I came. At the reception, I wore the dress that she got me, but I couldn't walk in the crutches while wearing it, not like the wedding one. So my aunt made me go in that dress and in my wheelchair, even though I didn't want it. And my cousin said I could wear a different dress, but my aunt was like my mom got the dress specially for me and will be upset if I don't wear it. Then at the reception, I wasn't seated at the table with family near the stage where she and her fiancé sat, but at a table with kids, I didn't even know, even though some of my relatives younger than me were at the family table. My aunt said they moved me there cause of my wheelchair, but I just don't get why I couldn't be with my family. My mom didn't even take a photo with me at the reception. She just came to me once and said hi, and I wasn't even in the family photo cause we didn't bring my crutches cause of my wheelchair, so my aunt said my mom told them to leave me cause they couldn't fit me in. Then the day after we were going home, my mom came to say goodbye to us. She talked to me alone for a minute and then she said sorry for everything that happened between us before and that she was hoping we could get past it but if we couldn't she was still happy I came to her wedding. I didn't really get to say anything cause she just hugged me and sent us on our way. I don't feel that sad everything anymore though cause I think that the antidepressants have been helping. I have been feeling happier for about a month now and nothing has happened to me like I was afraid. For the last two weeks, my mom has been texting good morning and good night again when I didn't do anything like text, call, or phone, or FaceTime since the therapy session with her. It hasn't been more than that, but I've been saying it back. I'm just confused with the way she's acting and what she wants. Do you guys have any clue or advice? Edit. I wish I could say thank you to everybody who has commented and given advice. I'm sorry if I didn't respond to you personally, but it means so much to me that you guys cared. I've read everything, and I will be bringing up a lot of this with my counselor. Thank you guys so much. I love you all. So I got a phone call from my mom, and I did answer because I guess I was curious because she's only been texting me since her wedding, and she said she wanted me to come over, and even though I was really missing her because I was going to go with my uncle's family to Seattle that weekend, I said no. I think I would have said no anyway because I was just planning on staying away like everybody here suggested, and my counselor also said that it might be good to define my life without her. She said okay, but then the day after I think she phoned my dad because he came said that I had to go to Victoria instead. I told him I didn't want to go, but we ended up arguing, and he said that I didn't have a choice and my uncle would take me somewhere when I got back. So my dad dropped me and my cousin off at the ferry, and when we got to Victoria, it turns out my mom and her wife, I guess stepmom now, moved into their new house. 
My mom's wife wasn't there cause she was in Ottawa for work, but her parents did come. They're really nice, they kind of went on about how they thought they'd never have grandkids, and were so happy when they learned my mom had me. They did offer to get me some presents this time, but my mom let them take me to dinner to some pierogi place in downtown instead. I don't know what to think about the visit because so much of it was good, but the one bad part was really bad. When I got there, I wanted to talk to her about the stuff at her wedding and everything else, and I wanted to tell her that I would rather have gone with my uncle, but then I just felt really nervous and just couldn't because, I don't know, I kind of felt like I'd just ruin the entire trip if I did. So, I just didn't, and maybe that was the wrong thing. The first thing I noticed in her house was her giant graduation picture, where she's holding a baby me above the fireplace. Then my mom surprised me by showing me my room, and it's perfect. I have a huge bed, a big personal washroom, a walk-in closet, one of those fancy standing desks, and a TV. It's all white cause my mom was like when my foot is better she wants me to come and paint and decorate it all with her. She even promised she'd never let anybody use the room even if I'm not there that often. The first night after I got back from the Pierogi place, my mom, my cousin, and I stayed up so late just watching TV, and I even fell asleep hugging her. The next day we went to downtown, and my mom took us shopping and then to the Royal BC Museum, the one with the mammoths. My foot and my hands really started hurting after because my mom made me use my crutches and not wheelchair because she said it'd be good exercise, so then she took us to a spa. We took so many pictures, and I'm pretty sure she put them on Instagram, but I'm not allowed on it anymore, so I'm not sure. I was really tired when we got back, so I comped out right away, and when I woke up in the morning, mom actually brought me pancakes in bed cause of my foot cause I love it when she makes those. The rest of that day was good too, except at night my mom said that when I moved in for university, we could make every day like this, so I reminded her that I might go to UBC instead. We got into a really big argument about university and I did scream at her and bring up stuff from before, but pretty much my mom said that she wants me to go to UVIC if I still want to do software engineering, and said that if it was any other kind of engineering I wanted to do she wouldn't mind paying for UBC, but that it's not good for software. She did say she would still pay no matter where I went but she'd be really disappointed if I chose not to go to the best university for my degree where I could stay with her just cause I blamed her coming out and moving for everything bad that's happened to me since then. She also said I needed to stop exaggerating how bad everything has been because it shouldn't make me change my university plan. I tried telling her that's not what I meant but I couldn't say it right and I fucking started crying and she seemed to get really mad. She didn't yell or anything but she just gave a frustrated sigh and said I needed to stop crying, grow up and accept that she handled things the best way she could and my attitude problems were why it's been a bad year for us. That just made me cry more and she said if I don't grow up I'm never going to get a husband and then left the room. I just kind of kept crying cause I don't feel like any of that is true, and the husband part was so fucking weird, and I honestly can't stop thinking about that part specifically. Half an hour later she came back with water and made me drink and started telling me how if I want to do computer or electrical or any other engineering she'd support UBC, but that UVic is the best for software outside of Waterloo, and she doesn't want to send me so far away, but will still pay for it if that's what I choose. I don't know why she wanted to keep talking about that, but I didn't so I just agreed when she said she'll take me to talk to an advisor to convince me next time I come over. Me and my cousin left early next morning, so yesterday, and my mom said she'd try and come over for my birthday because her in-laws really wanted to attend, and that she'd try and make an appointment at UVic once my foot's better. The thing is that argument was the one bad thing about that visit. Everything else would have been perfect because it was just like it used to be with her, and I don't even know if I'd be posting if it had been, but I just can't stop thinking about the stuff that she said when we argued. I don't even know why she said the husband thing. I just don't get what the fuck she meant by that or why she would bring it up. I'm not going to smash my phone this time, but I do feel mad thinking about it. I told my cousin about the argument we had on the way back, and she told me she personally thinks I should go to UBC and would try to convince my mom, but that she thinks she just wants me to live with her again. I told my dad and his fiancé about it, and he apologized for making me go, but said that he had to. He and his fiancé have checked on me a dozen times already. Like, I get that stupid fucking feeling in my stomach again every time I think about it, and I wish I'd been able to go with my uncle instead. But I'm going to spend the rest of the week at his apartment, so I guess it's fine. I'm going to go to my counselor again today before my uncle picks me up. Does anybody have any advice for me that I can bring up? Because we went through comments posted here last time. So, some stuff has happened. I've pretty much just been texting with my mom since my visit to her. I tried to keep it good night slash good morning, but when I didn't respond to her other messages, she phoned my dad and he told me I didn't have to phone her, but to at least respond to her other messages. I did have to go to Victoria for Thanksgiving because her wife's whole family was going to be there and she told my dad I had to go. I was only there for three days with my cousin, and the first two days, my mom pretty much spent with me, and it was like it used to be again. Like she and I went shopping, we even cuddled to sleep watching TV again, but the third day she and her wife were focused on the dinner and guests and everything so I get it. Yeah I was upset that she paid really little attention to me but her wife's entire immediate family was there, and I get that she needed to focus on them. But when we left after dinner, we had to take the really late ferry. My mom said bye, and that she was going to book a meeting at UVic to take me to, and didn't even give me a second to talk about it before waving us bye. 
And then it went back to just texting good morning slash good night until my birthday. So then my mom and her wife came with her wife's parents because my mom was like they really wanted to celebrate my birthday. I guess they're my step-grandparents, but I really like them and they seem to really like me too. I mean, step-grandma said the best thing about the wedding was that they finally got a grandchild and they brought a lot of presents for me. They have a niece around my age and they had her go out with them and just get so much stuff that they think someone my age will like and I do like it. My mom got me an album of pictures of us and said to look at the photos whenever I miss her cause it'll make it like she's right there with me. At the party, mom and dad seemed to get along just like when they were married. Like they were laughing, telling jokes, and even had me do goofy pictures with them like we all used to. Mom's wife got along with dad's fiance and with my uncle, his son, and his son's wife. My mom didn't talk to my uncle at all beyond when he came to say hi to her and she said hi in a really mean tone to him, which was weird since they used to be so close. I guess she's still mad at him for when I talked to him about what was going on. She was really weird with my boyfriend and was nonstop making jokes about him and me getting married and making her a grandma. She straight up said to him, I don't want you to wait until I'm gray and in my 40s to make me a grandma. But his mom also got in the jokes, so I guess it was just a mom thing. My mom and her wife left after only about an hour and a half and to go stay at a fancy hotel all the way over by Coal Harbor, even though my dad did offer them a room. Mom just said she doesn't feel it'd be appropriate to stay in the same house as him, and it's too painful for her cause she designed the house when I asked her why she couldn't stay. It did piss me off because they came at four o'clock and so when everyone was setting up, and I guess that means they missed the actual party. My step-grandparents stayed though, and only left in the morning when my mom and her wife came to pick them up. Then at like 8.30, my mom did FaceTime me, but it looked like she and her wife were in the hotel spa or something. It doesn't make sense because I thought those clothes pretty early in the day, but they were wearing those robes and looked like they were someplace really fancy. Then my mom was like, she has to hang up because she doesn't want me to see them without clothes on, and they were both giggling at that. That really fucking pissed me off that they ditched my birthday to go hang out in a spa. Maybe they were actually doing something else, but I honestly don't want to even think about that beyond what I have. Then there was the album that she gave me as a present. I didn't really think about that a lot then, because I was just happy that she came. But I did try yesterday because my dad's fiancé was meeting with some of her relatives for last-minute planning, because her and dad's wedding is on Sunday. I wasn't with them because I was studying, but when I did leave my room to get my charger, I heard them talking about me. My dad's fiancé was saying the best stuff about me, but her relatives were saying some shitty things about my mom, and she wasn't stopping them. She was also talking about how my mom is forcing my dad's hand to send me to her over winter break instead of my uncle's cause that's when their honeymoon is. I didn't meno spy, and I get now that I'm writing about it that what they were saying wasn't exactly wrong, and they were only saying it because they didn't think I'd hear, but it really fucking pissed me off, and it still does. So cause I was upset, I looked at the album, and it's pictures of both of us from when I was a baby until now. Behind each picture, she slid a note about why that memory is special, or what the picture means to her, if she can't remember. But it just made me angry, because of how few photos there are from after she moved to Victoria. Most of them are the ones of the wedding day, and barely anything before that. There's one photo in it that was like a month before she came out, and it's when she lived at my cousin's house, and pretty much I surprised her with the cookies that my cousin and I made that day. When I surprised her, she hugged me so tight and told me she was so proud of me, and my cousin took the photo on her phone. But that night, I found her crying in her room, and she said it's because I'm growing up and said something like how she wishes she could live in moments like that forever, since she's so proud of me. And it just makes me so mad because that's what I want back and the fact that I'm not even in photos of her pre-wedding events and reception and so much other stuff in Victoria just makes it seem as if the album is her giving me proof that I've barely been in her life and that I should be happy for it. And I know I shouldn't be thinking that because she actually gave me such a good gift and I'm poisoning it in my own mind instead of valuing it and all the memories inside. My therapist has been trying to help me define life without her and it's hard because I don't want to because I can't let go of this feeling that it could be good again and I don't want those people to be right. My therapist says it's all right to want that, but for my own sake, I need to in case it doesn't ever happen, and it'll help once I'm in university, so I've been trying, but I hate it. So, I guess I came here again to ask for advice and stuff I can bring up in therapy. So, the day after my dad and his fiancé got married, I guess she's also my stepmom now, I had to go to Victoria because my mom wanted me there. My cousin was supposed to come, but she changed plans cause her boyfriend got time off work, so they went to Whistler instead. When I got to my mom's house, I was there for half an hour and found out my mom and her wife were going to Ottawa for her wife's job, so I'd be staying with my step-grandparents until Christmas weekend. I call them step-grandparents here cause it makes sense for some reason, but in real life I've started calling them Nana and Papa. I'll be honest, I had so much fun with them. I really love them both so much. Step-grandpa loves basketball as well, and he's also a Lakers fan. Step-grandma taught me how to knit. I'm not that good. They made me amazing breakfasts and lunch every day I was there. We would go out for dinner every night, and they even live closer to Uvic than my mom does. So they said if I go there, they'd turn a room into a study room for me. The thing was when my mom came back and I went back there, she told me that she found out while in Ottawa that they got a new car for me for Christmas. 
Mom was kind of angry because she thinks it's too much, and I was honestly just scared because I've never had anything so expensive. But my mom talked it out with my dad, and apparently it's all right. So on Christmas, they brought me the car, and it is really cool. I was so nervous to drive it, but I do like it. I left it in Victoria because I don't want to drive by myself yet. My mom got me a lot of presents, and I mean a lot. There was so much there it felt super overwhelming. After Christmas, we saw that new Disney movie Strange World because my mom and I both love those kind of movies. In it, the main character is a teenager who has issues with his dad and grandpa, and he's also gay, but it's just who he is, and it's handled like normal in the movie. But as soon as it became clear he was gay, my mom got really quiet and just kind of shut down, and just went to her room when the movie was done. She didn't even say goodnight to me. When I went to brush, I could hear her crying really badly to her wife, and I know I shouldn't spy, but I just had to, and she was crying about how it's so normal now, and how she wishes she could have come out as a teenager, and lived her life the way she should have, and how she and her wife could have gotten married way before. I felt really bad, and then I heard her talk about how many years she wasted as a soccer mom, and I got mad as well, and just went to my room. I was kind of prepared to argue about the movie the next morning, but my mom didn't even come out of her room. Her wife said she was feeling sick, and when I went to say good morning, she stopped me because she was like, my mom doesn't mean to see her like that. I heard my mom throwing up, and when I said good morning through the door, just to check on her, she said it back, but then started crying again really loudly, and had her wife take me away, because she said she can't let me hear her cry. I just stayed watching TV after that because I felt really bad because it was my idea to watch that movie. Her wife kept going back and forth and tried to get her to eat and apparently she ate some bread, but then she threw that up too. Then my step-grandparents came because they were worried and they went driving with me to distract me. We went to DQ even though it was really cold and it did get my mind off things until step-grandpa answered a call from my mom's wife and, and then he was telling her to take my mom to a hospital but I heard her mention how my mom would rather die than go there and how she didn't see her parents in the hospital and didn't even go to see me. When my step-grandparents asked if that was true, I said it was about me, and I tried not to but I did cry. They got me to stop and I still feel fucking embarrassed that I cried in front of them, but we had a good day together. When my step-grandparents dropped me off, my mom was on the couch and called me over and then gave me such a big hug, but it was like she was holding in tears. She told me that she wasn't feeling good at all and asked if I wouldn't mind going back to my step-grandparents the day after. Her wife said that maybe they should send me back to Vancouver and I could stay with my uncle and my mom just got so angry, I actually got really scared and she went on a rant about how she's not going to let me see him and how he's just been trying to turn me against her and he just hates her because she doesn't have AIDS trauma. That didn't make sense because my uncle doesn't have AIDS and he needs to get over himself and remember that my dad is his brother and not son and to focus on his actual granddaughter. Her wife tried to calm her down, but then she just yelled out that she wishes that my uncle would just fucking die, and it was the worst decision of her life to pity my dad and not just take me with her when she left. I really didn't know that she hated him that much. Like when I was younger, they were always so close and dad would even joke sometimes about her stealing his brother. I honestly started crying really badly because he is my favorite uncle, but that just made mom angrier, and she was like to her wife that it's just proof that nobody understands and that my uncle is trying to steal me cause I'm the best thing in her life. Then she actually yelled at me to fucking stop crying, that I cried more than I did when I was a baby, and she said the thing about me not getting a husband again. Her wife just took my mom to their room, and they left me on the couch, and I don't know, I couldn't stop crying, and I just fell asleep there because I didn't feel like I could move. In the morning, I woke up and I was still on the couch, but there was a blanket on me, and my head was in my mom's lap, and really felt like crying again, but I held it in, and then my mom actually said sorry. She said she doesn't know what's been happening to her since we saw the movie, but it was no excuse to yell at me for crying and she's so sorry that she hurt me so badly and she's starting to understand how horrible she's been to me the entire winter break. She called her wife over and made her apologize to me too. And after breakfast, we had a really big talk about how she was feeling and she seemed really sorry and said she would never get mad at me for crying again. But what mattered to me was when she said she was sorry she took all her anger on my uncle out on me and that she was wrong to do that and wrong to let me know how she feels because it would be wrong to make me stop loving him. She said she knows I might not forgive her, but even if I do, she'll never forgive herself and she will try to change back to who I need her to be so we can go back to normal. She did offer to let me go to him and I don't know why I didn't say yes, but I kind of felt like I still had to stay. I talked to her wife too, and she was really sorry for what happened cause she'd never seen my mom that way before and just wanted to calm things down. She told me she was wrong not to take my side, and apparently my mom was mad at her for not doing that and she feels really guilty, and she's the one who put the blanket on me, and she slept by me until like 4 a.m. when my mom came and took over. She also said she'd do whatever it took to get my forgiveness, and she wishes she never hurt me, because I've become such an important part of her life, and she's so grateful I love her parents. For the rest of the break, my mom didn't really talk that much, and she did start eating, but it wasn't that much. My step-grandparents came over every day to check on me. Mom did seem to get a little bit better on New Year's. Every time I'd ask how she felt though, she'd just say she's fine, and it's her job to worry about me, and not the other way around. 
I did go home the day after New Year's because school was starting but I had to go back on Friday. I got back Sunday night because I had a meeting at UVic. And mom seemed really different. She seemed smaller somehow, and she definitely looked skinnier. I know it's only been two weeks, but she seemed skinnier, and she still seemed sad, but like she was at least pretending to be happy. The meeting at UVic went really good, and it really does seem like an amazing place to go to school. And even though I don't know if I want to do engineering anymore, there's still a lot there. My mom did make me sign up to go check out UBC, SFU, and Lingara as well. She also said that she's going with her wife to Ontario in February, and we can do a road trip together while her wife is working and check out Univera sites there like Waterloo or McMaster and U of T. She said she wanted me to know I can choose to go to them, but she's confident I'll come to her. But aside from the meeting, she didn't leave home at all. I did to hang out with my step-grandparents, and when I was there, she cuddled me almost the entire day unless we were eating, and her wife told me she's been working from home. I don't know what to make about any of it, like if this means I'm getting my mom back like she used to be, or if she's just going to keep on changing, or if she's depressed now too. I wasn't planning on posting, but I feel like I need people's opinions on what could be happening with her. So I'm posting here because I've gotten a lot of DMs and I guess I just want to address things. My spring break is almost over, just this week left, so I don't know how much more I'll be on here. I'm not posting this in just a mail because my original account has not been restored yet and I figure it's best if I only post on my profile or on mom for a minute and I'm sure that whoever sees this here could give advice. That way I won't break any rules again. So first I haven't seen my mom since winter break and I do miss her a lot. It's weird because I don't want to go to her house and my therapist has been helping me deal with it saying this is the time to learn to be myself but I do miss her a lot and I wish I could see her. At the beginning of last month, my mom did start going to therapy herself, and I was supposed to go and see her for Valentine's, but her therapist said she was unstable and made it an unsafe environment for me, so I couldn't go. She texts me good morning and good night every day, but whenever I've called or FaceTimed, she would hang up, and I know that because it ends after a ring, or she texts me to not call. I talk to her wife on the phone every week, and she said she's been getting better. My cousin got engaged last week, and my mom did call me then. My mom and my cousin are really close, and I'm so happy she's getting married, so it's a big deal for all of us. And my mom promised me that she'll come over whenever my cousin actually starts planning, because she doesn't want to get married until November. She did start making those jokes again about me and my boyfriend being next, but stopped when I asked. And when she called, my mom told me that therapy has helped her see she had the wrong view on some things, so she said she's sorry for not to taking me with her when she came out and moved. She said that's why I was being resentful and thinking horrible things, and if she could do it all over again, she would take me so we could be as close as we were. She said she didn't take me because she still loves my dad and was worried he would be broken without me and she didn't want to uproot my life. She did say it was nice to get a break from being a day-to-day -day mom, but it hasn't been worth how bad things have gotten between us. She promised me I am the most important thing in her life, and when therapy gets her to a place where she can be herself again, we'll be just like we used to. I don't know every time I think about that call it's been confusing me because I'm happy that she finally said sorry to me and that it's not my fault and she was wrong to go without me. But at the same time the call just kept making me feel like she's never going to get to where she needs to be even though she's in therapy. I know I'm being ridiculous or worrying too much because I tried to tell her that, but she didn't get what I meant. My step-grandparents did come over for the weekend though. We had a lot of fun together and step-grandpa slash papa promised me that he'd get us Lakers tickets if they made it to the playoffs. And not just him and me, but my cousin, her fiancé, my dad, and his wife too. So, I really hope that they do. They did ask me about my mom and told me she's got a really big promotion at work, but I guess they knew talking about her was making me sad since they only did it once. Oh, and to people messaging me asking about my uncle, and asking if he's the same uncle I mentioned who has a son, yes he is. When my uncle's partner was alive, he got custody of his nephew because his sister died, and my uncle and his partner raised him together. So he is my uncle's son, and is my cousin, and his daughter is my niece. I got 12 people messaging me, and like it's probably just one troll, but it is very annoying. If you guys have any advice that I can bring up with my therapist, I would love to hear it. So I guess I'm posting here because I need to vent somewhere, because it feels like nobody is listening. I guess the first thing is that other than texting, my mom and I haven't talked at all aside from this last weekend. The first thing was that my cousin is getting married, and she told me that she wants to have kids as soon as she gets married. Because my aunt isn't alive, and our real grandparents aren't either, she wants my mom to be her kid's grandma. I don't know why that still made me feel so weird especially because I was there when my cousin phoned my mom and she seemed so happy and excited even though this is like two years away. But my mom has been taking care of my cousin since she was like 11 or 12 and they both mean a lot to each other, so I tried to get over it. And then my step-grandfather got me, my dad, my cousin and her fiancé tickets to the Lakers slash Warriors game. My step-grandfather couldn't come even though he wanted to because my step-grandmother and my mom's wife got sick and my mom didn't feel she could take care of both of them alone. I still had the best time at the game and saw LeBron and Steph Curry, and the Lakers even won, but I wish that everyone could have gone. 
And then I got into UVic, UBC, SFU, McMaster, Waterloo, Guelph, and University of Guelph. I think it's because of my extracurricular projects and clubs because my English grades are still very bad, even though I'm doing great in everything else. So my mom phoned me and said she was coming over this last weekend because it was a long weekend and we were going to talk about university and her will, and I got nervous but excited because she was actually going to come. And she came on Friday and said she'd be staying with my cousin, but she came to our house first. She really looked a lot different. I mean, she looked so much skinnier than before, and she had her hair dyed jet black with green streaks in it. And then she was wearing all these fancy and expensive clothes that she never wore before, like she was wearing a Versace dress and promised to get me one too. She also got a tattoo on her wrist with my name and showed me it, and the design was beautiful, but it was so weird seeing her looking so different. She said she'd leave on Monday, and that gave us an entire weekend together. She took me and my boyfriend out for dinner, and then we even watched the new Fast and Furious movie, and she didn't even make those jokes about us getting married. And I stayed over at my cousin's that night, and we did cuddle and get up late and make breakfast together, and we had a lot of fun. We spent that day together as well, and then had dinner at a really nice place in Burnaby with my cousin and her fiancé. And then on Sunday, we finally had the talk. She and my dad and my dad's wife sat me down, and first they talked about the will. My mom said she's leaving me most of the things she has with my cousin getting the rest, and my dad said pretty much the same. I don't want to go into specifics, but they kept talking about it down to the details like my great-grandmother's necklaces and what to do when I inherit their houses and life insurance and stuff even though I really didn't want it. It felt so morbid thinking about them being dead, and they wouldn't stop. They both said I'm going to university, I'm 17, and I need to know this, and it just made my mood so sour. And then I told my mom the universities that I got into, and she was so happy that I got into so many. And then she said that as much as she wants me to come to UVic, she's proud of me either way and would be perfectly fine with me staying and going to UBC. But then I told her that my boyfriend was going to McMaster, and I wanted to go, so we could be together. Her face got really disappointed then, and she said that's not the right reason to choose moving all the way to Hamilton for, and she can't support my decision if it's not for myself and my education. She said if I'm serious about going to an East Coast university, then every other one on my list is just as good. That started another argument between us because I got really mad and asked what's the problem, and she asked if I'm going to study or to support my boyfriend. Then she went on about sex and what if I got pregnant, and I yelled at her that she should be happy since it's like she keeps talking about me getting married and having kids. She didn't yell back at me and just said that she was always joking about that and won't make those jokes again. But then I said that she and dad were both 18 when they got married and then had me, and she started talking about how hard that made university for her and how it led her to repress who she was for so long and how she wants me to focus on my future. Then when I said I wanted to have my future with him, she said she's going to talk to his mother about this and I should get ready to break up with him if he can't go long distance because it's the best thing for me. And I started crying because I don't want to break up with him and I didn't want to because as soon as I did I could see her get really, really mad like she wanted to scream at me, but all she said was that she's extremely disappointed in me and that she can't be here. She left and she went to my cousin's house and that just made me cry more and I fell asleep hugging my dad. On Monday, my mom... My dad and my dad's wife met with my boyfriend's mom, and we weren't allowed to be there. I don't know what they talked about, but they did agree that we shouldn't go to McMaster together, even though I know they wouldn't have said that if we both chose UBC. My boyfriend's mad too, but he said that he's still going to McMaster no matter what his mom says. Before my mom left, she told me she knows I'm mad at her, but one day I'll know that she was just looking out for me and to choose any other university on my list, and she'll pay for it right away. It just makes no sense. I really want this, and they're all agreeing with her that I shouldn't. I talked to my cousin, and she said my mom has a point. I told my uncle, and he said that I need to look at it like would my boyfriend go to Guelph for me even though that's not the point. Even my counselor said that my mom was right, and that just because we've been having issues and that she's been on the wrong side of things doesn't mean she's always wrong. I don't know what else to write, I'm just feeling really pissed off. Hey everyone, it's been a while since I posted, but my parents didn't let me online until now. But I'm graduated now, prom went by, and it was great. Then there was the convocation ceremony, and I did amazing on my final exams. I did decide that I'd go to UBC. I still wish I could be going to McMaster, but most of my friends are going to UBC or Lingara or UVic, so I won't be completely alone. My mom was happy when I told her. She did say she wished I'd have chosen UVic, but that UBC is one of the best schools. Before convocation, we got into another argument. My friend Sarah is from Egypt, and now that high school is over, she's going there in August to get married. I know she's young, but she's known this guy since they were kids, and they were dating there before she moved over. She's invited all of us to the wedding and her grandparents are super rich there and said they'd get us rooms at the best hotel. Except once again, everyone said I couldn't go. My mom said that she doesn't want me to go to a country where people are persecuted for being gay or trans, but I googled it and being gay isn't illegal there. My dad said the same thing about it. My uncle is gay and has been to Egypt and told me that foreigners aren't bothered about such things. 
He said that if I really want to go to Egypt, then next year he'll arrange for the family vacation to go there since it's one of my cousin slash his son's dream vacations, and I can come. But I want to go with my friends and see Sarah's wedding, because apparently it's going to be like a princess wedding out of a movie. Convocation was the best night of my life. Everything about it was just perfect, and my favorite part was when they announced the scholarships that we got, and I got so many, and my mom and dad both looked so proud of me. Then all us grads went to a party on a farm that a classmate was hosting, and it was so great there. My boyfriend and I had the best time, but in the morning, we did break up and decide to stay friends because he doesn't want to do long distance and thinks dragging it out over summer would just be too painful. And I don't know, I just felt so wrong the day after that I did something really stupid, and it kind of made a mess of everything. The house became a real crowd after that. Like my uncle came over, his son, his son's wife, and their daughter, my step-grandparents, my cousin, and they all stayed over for like a week. I wasn't allowed out of my room, and somebody had to be there with me at all times. It was really weird. None of my friends came over to check on me either, because my mom had my cousin text them to keep them away. Except my friend Vanessa, who I only met at a party in November, came over anyway. She stayed overnight with me and even cried when I admitted what I did and told me she thinks of me as one of her best friends. It was Vanessa's first time meeting my parents, and that went really well. My mom's wife really liked her when she found out she wanted to work in politics after graduation. My mom was really weird during that entire time, though, because I heard her arguing with my uncle a lot, but neither of them left the house. Somebody would stay with me in the morning, and then after her remote work finished, she'd come to me, but even when she was working, she'd peek in every 15 minutes. What was really weird was that she didn't cry in front of me at all and kept telling me to not cry and would leave if I did, but I know I heard her crying in the washroom. I don't know what issue she has with me crying, and it's really making me feel so fucking down every time I think about it. As for everyone else, my uncle made me promise never to do something stupid like that again. He told me that he knows I have actual grandparents now, but that he'll always see me just like he does his actual granddaughter. My step-grandparents were so nice too, and even brought my car over from Victoria because they thought it could cheer me up. My baby niece obviously had no idea what was going on, but it was really nice to be around her. It was also the first time in forever that my mom's wife and I actually got to spend some time alone together, and that was nice. It was funny talking to her about when she was in high school because she sounds like the exact opposite of who she is now. She also said sorry to me about my mom only telling my cousin when they started dating and waiting until they were moving in to tell me. She told me that my mom wanted to tell me earlier, but she asked her not to until she knew for sure that my mom was the one, and by then they were moving. That did make me cry, but hearing her say sorry did also make feel better, for some reason. My mom and her wife went back to Victoria, but my mom's come back three times already and even came with me and my dad to see my psychiatrist, and she's been texting me and FaceTiming me a lot more. Every time she sees me now, she's been hugging me a lot more, calling me by a lot of baby nicknames, some that I even forgot about. She also said it was all right for me to go to Egypt if I really wanted to. I know that the stupid thing I did got her worried and all, but it feels so odd that that's what it took for her to snap back to being like she was, and I don't know if it's real or not. I guess I'm posting here again, because I've honestly missed being able to talk to people here and get advice from you guys. So, if you've got any, I'd love to hear it. Hi, everyone. I know it's been a really long time since I posted, but I've been busy because of university and other stuff. My mom has been coming over every other weekend now, and if her wife doesn't have to travel for work, then she comes too. I guess things have been getting better between us. Even when she's not over, she's always texting and calling, and I know it's because of what I did. I haven't tried doing something like that again. I have thought about it, but I haven't tried it, and I don't think I'm going to. And I have full control over my phone and internet again, because my dad agreed that I need it for university. I did go on Instagram again, but I deleted it because of my mom's posts. They're just so weird, there's one of her and her wife that they posted for pride, and they're barely covered, and my mom looks so skinny like a skeleton, and all the comments are of my friend's mom's cheering them. I just felt so gross seeing that that I deleted the app. I think things between my mom and my uncle have been getting better. My uncle took me to the counter-protest against the anti-Sogi people in Vancouver. My mom found out, and she told him thank you for taking me there, and then they hugged. They still don't talk to each other again, but my mom hasn't said anything bad about him again. I'll be honest because I really don't like university, and I just find it to be so much and so stressful, and it's like everyone is a genius. The subjects that I was amazing at in high school are so much harder, and I spend so much time in office hours. I've tried dating again, and I even went out with a girl a few times, my friend Vanessa set us up, but school has just been so in my head that I had to say no. I just wish that there was another way. I mean, I like the UBC campus, and I've made friends, but I don't think I'm having the same university experience as everyone else. So it's been really stressful, and I don't know, I just wish it was different. And I did go to Egypt before in the summer. My mom told me that if my dad or my uncle or my uncle's son Miles could go with me, then I could go. I know that she only changed her mind because of the thing that I did, but I'm still glad that she let me go. Miles' wife was taking their daughter to see her family in America, so he went with me. 
And it was honestly so fun. Sarah got all of us booked in this really fancy hotel. Her grandparents were so nice and took us on this boat tour. And then the wedding and the reception were so much fun. Sarah and her husband are living in Egypt now, and they're working for her grandpa's company. It's so weird because she's pregnant now and she's as old as I am. When Sarah's mom posted the news about being a grandma on Facebook, my mom and her wife were over and she read it and went, oh, I wish she got married and we're having a baby too. I'm so jealous she's going to be a grandma. It was so weird and I don't know why she always says things like that. And I felt like throwing up because sometimes I feel like people are right with their comments that she just wants me to give her a baby because she can't have one anymore. My mom does go with me and my dad to each psychiatrist appointment, and the last time we went was so weird because my mom got told about how a lot of the stuff she said and did hurt me, and how she needs to let me cry, how eventually I'll be able to get off meds. She just acted, so weird like it took so much to get her to say sorry, and she did, and it was all the words of a real apology, it just didn't sound like she meant it. And she even argued with my psychiatrist about crying, and then just said that she has a complex about it, and if I need to cry, she'll try to let me. So, I think things are getting better, even though my mom is still being really weird about a lot of things. And I will post again, but probably after the next semester break or later. I got a lot of DMS on here of people who are worried. I'm okay. I'm just busy cause of school. Hi everyone. It feels like it's been so long since I've updated. I really haven't been online at all. But honestly, after my last update, but things did get a lot better between me and my mom and honestly, it was really good. She stopped coming over every weekend, but does come for all of my psychiatrist appointments still. So I didn't have any reason to update because she was good and I felt good and happy and school is still really hard. And I honestly hate it. And one time I told my mom just how hard it was and how I was getting CS in most of my classes in the summer semester, and I did cry and she didn't yell at me or get mad at me, she just hugged me instead. I just hate university now, it makes me feel stupid. I am back on Instagram because my mom took down all those photos she had where she's like pretty much naked. She didn't tell me why when I asked, she just said she didn't need it anymore. But according to her wife, apparently a girl I graduated with tried flirting with her online, and she was so grossed out by the idea of anyone my age liking her like that that she deleted everything. Her wife said she was like, I could be her mom, and the idea of that made me laugh. She stopped getting skinnier too. She's still super skinny, but she's not losing any more weight. But a big thing did happen last week, and it's why I'm updating again, and pretty much I was spending the last two weeks before my classes start again at my mom's house in Victoria. I've been seeing this guy since May, and it's not that serious, but I thought I might have got pregnant even though I'm not, and I snuck out and bought a test. When I used it, my mom's wife walked in on me and she tried talking to me about it, but my mom heard and she came in, and it all just got so bad then. She freaked out and told me that if I'm pregnant, then I have to marry whoever the dad is. Her wife said that's not an issue that I might not be pregnant, and I don't need to ruin my degree over this, and then my mom just got even more angry and yelled that she's not going to let me just kill her grandson, and they'd raise him if they needed to. I started crying and she yelled that if I am pregnant, I have to learn to stop crying just like she did, and then her wife took her away to her room, and I just kind of stayed there. Her wife came back like half an hour later, and I could hear them arguing even when she took me to my bed. She promised me that my mom's just in shock, and that I won't have to do anything I don't need to do. I just went to sleep, I mean I know they kept on arguing, but I just felt so bad. In the morning my mom woke me up with breakfast in bed, she still made me brush though, and apologized and said that she wants so badly to have a grandson the right way that she got caught up. She admitted that she was wrong, and said that we would do whatever I wanted if I was pregnant, and I wouldn't be killing anything. I told her how it felt like she was lying cause of all the stuff that made it sound like she didn't want me to have a baby and she said she was just eager and it didn't mean anything but that she'll stop saying it because it clearly had a bad effect on her. I'm not pregnant, I'm not having a baby or anything but it really scared me because it's almost been a year and things have been so good and then this happened. I'm not seeing that guy anymore either, I don't want to think about what could have happened and with my grades how they are I'd rather do good in this semester. Oh, and to everyone messaging me why I call my mom's wife that and not my stepmom. It's just because on here sometimes I mention my dad's wife too. In real life, I do introduce her as my stepmom. I didn't at the beginning, but I did after she started to. I don't know when I'll update again, and if things get good again, and stay that way I might not, because I won't need to scream online.